May I help you? No, finish your phone call. The war can wait. Let's talk about War Machine. Okay. Do you want to tell me briefly about the film? War Machine is based on a book called The Operators. And we wanted to talk about our time, man. Why are we in a 16-year war with no end in sight? Our hope is that you're the man who will get the job done. When you're doing a character like McMahon, you took some very obvious I went big. character traits. Sometimes it can be hard to see the helping hand, what with all the guns and the strange guys and the mess and what have you. I went big because we want to present it in an absurd fashion. Smile for the cameras, Glenn. And we want it to be funny. Most of us here will know General McMahon as the man who kicked Al Qaeda in the sack. You're welcome. Comedy gives us the ability to laugh at ourselves and bring up some very serious questions. These people want freedom. Roads and schools and jobs. We're using it as a template to talk about this premise that we're American and everyone wants what we want, that military might is going to solve all our problems. This is a war that will be won primarily with the unassailable might and power of our ideals. And what we've seen is that premise is wrong. It just has made more of a mess. There's this constant conflict between the military, the Pentagon, the executive branch, and the media pulling the decision-making process. Get your PowerPoint presentation in order. Show everyone how all the graphs are suddenly pointing in the right direction. That's all you gotta do. A nice looking set of graphs. Seems to be a real disconnect from what's really going on on the ground. And we haven't even mentioned civilian casualties. And... I need to see a weapon! I can't tell the difference between the people and the enemy. They all look alike to me. One of the reasons why I wanted to do this film, I went to visit Walter Reed, and of course it's very sobering. You see young soldiers permanently damaged, physically and mentally. And they're, you know, they're fighting the good fight, they're soldiers, and trying to keep good, you know, strong spirits. And maybe I'm projecting as a father and what I felt, but if we really want to support our troops, we need a true assessment of what we're expending life and limb on, because we're talking about people. It's a lost cause. We can stay in Afghanistan forever. That's why I'm gonna win it. It's really difficult for studios to do material like this, complicated, complex, gutsy material, because the gamble is so big for them financially. And now with Netflix, it's a much more interesting direction. I don't know that this film would exist without it. You're the leader of US forces in Afghanistan, and you have spoken to the president once in 70 days. I come here to manage this war, and I sure as shit didn't come here to close it out. We're in a polarized state, and we need opinions. We need people to speak out. It's one of our hopes with this film. Maybe we have something to learn here. All the winning we were ever going to do, we did in the first six months. You're not here to win. You're here to clean up the mess. Hi, Vale here with more on comedy for you. Now, when you think of comedy, you don't necessarily link comedy movies to the Oscars. In fact, very rarely have comedy films won the Best Picture Oscar. The following have been the only comedies that have won Best Picture. It happened one night from 1934. You can take it with you from 1938, the musical comedy Going My Way from 1944, Tom Jones from 1963, The Sting from 1973, and Annie Hall from 1977. There are other borderline or hybrid comedies that have won the award, including The Apartment from 1960, Terms of Endearment from 1983, Driving Miss Daisy from 1989, Forrest Gump from 1994, Shakespeare in Love from 1998, and two dark comedies, American Beauty from 1999 and Birdman from 2014. What's your favorite comedy movie? Let me know in the comments below and remember to subscribe to our channel for the all best comedy movie releases.